All right, welcome back to PC Building Simulator. Welcome back to the EVJ Workshop, and welcome back to Free Build Mode. Welcome back to a lot of things. Uh, in the last episode, we built this, the all fractal design PC, using a bunch of the new fractal design uh, components that we got in the newest updated PC Building Simulator. It's pretty fun. Uh, built inside the fractal design Define 7. We got to use MSI's like super top of the line RTX 3090, and uh, create a really nice looking like slate gunmetal gray looking theme minus the rings around the front uh, AIO. Otherwise, it looks really great. Uh, today we're gonna do a different build, something a little less high-end. I tend to gravitate towards high-end a lot, like this one that I built uh, recently for the official PC Building Simulator YouTube channel. Be sure to check that out if you haven't seen it. Uh, this one was a lot of fun to build, doing kind of a different water cooling loop. Uh, but yeah, I tend to gravitate kind of towards the high end, and so today I want to do something a little less high end, a little more like mid range, a little more practical, a little more reasonable. And we're going to do it in one of the cases that I actually really enjoy in this game. It's the Corsair 380T, which is a mini ITX case. It's a small form factor case. Uh, it's got a handle, so you can pick it up like a lunchbox and take it to your friend's house. Uh, it's even got like a, I think it's got like a fan controller right there. Uh, mic, headphone, reset button, couple USBs, power button, you know. Uh, but it's a really cool case, it's really unique, and I built it a couple times, but it's been a while, and I thought it'd be fun to do kind of like a black and white, small form factor, mid-range build. So we're gonna do it in the Corsair 380T, so let's do it. We can pull off the side vents here, those both just pull right off. We can also pull this front one off, and we've got a 140 RGB fan from Corsair, their LL140 RGB fan uh, pre-installed there in the front, and the ML120 non-RGB in the rear. That's how it's all set up. And uh, we'll see that there's a pretty interesting case layout here. Um, we got the ability to put a, uh, a motherboard kind of horizontal facing up, which is kind of unique. So let's go ahead and get going on that. So I'm gonna go for kind of a black and white theme. Uh, we're also gonna do Ryzen for this one. Uh, so we're gonna go for kind of mid-range, nothing too crazy, but you can find that there's a lot of value in the mid-range and a lot of performance in the mid-range. So what we're gonna go with here, uh, we're not gonna go with an X570, we're gonna do a B550 board, uh, specifically the MSI MPG B550i Gaming. So a more mid-ranger motherboard, not so uh, crazy expensive like the X570. And honestly, you get a lot with B550. Uh, if you're not getting like big overclocking, X570, you know, you just don't necessarily need it. Uh, this does have a uh, M.2 NVMe PCIe Gen 4 drive right here, a little mount there, so we could put an SSD there. I'm actually not going to because in this situation, I'm going to go with something a little more affordable, which is going to be a standard 2.5 inch SSD. So we're not gonna put the actual NVMe drive there, but it would be there for future expandability and whatnot. So uh, let's get our CPU set up. So we're gonna scroll all the way down here and we are gonna grab the Ryzen 5 5600X, which is a six core, 12 thread CPU. Uh, still, I mean, for the for the money, it is not a $500 CPU. Let's be very, very clear. How much does the 5600X cost in real life? Uh, I, got, I can't remember. Uh, it's way less than that. I'll tell you that. It's, it's way less than that. It's like, what, 250 bucks? I don't know, 300? I'm not sure. Uh, but it's really, really affordable for a really uh, a, a good performing six core CPU. So uh, 5600X there. Let's just glob our thermal paste on. There it is. Uh, to get us set up and started. We can also get some memory going, uh, maybe. <laughs> Hello, there there we go. The memory clips were, were not uh, playing nice. We are going to at least get some pretty quick memory, but we're not gonna, anything, we're not gonna get anything too flashy. 36,000 speed, please. Yes, no. Uh, we're gonna go with just G-Scale Ripshaw's five, eight gig, 3600. So speed, um, performance but not flashiness i don't need anything flashy i just want decently clocked uh memory with 16 gig capacity in two in two dims uh that should do it right there so there's our memory looking pretty good uh we got kind of a black and white you know black and white that's just gonna happen naturally so uh as far as our cpu cooler amazing we actually have enough space in here you don't have to go with some super flat small form factor cpu cooler we can get a full-on tower cooler in here. Um, and I guess I'm gonna put that in now. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put that in now. 
we're gonna have to do some interesting stuff with the case fan part of this, but that's okay. Uh, I'm gonna check out Arctic Freezer's A13X. That is new in 1.12 update, and I haven't used it yet, so I thought it'd be kind of fun to put in there. Should I do it with the white fan fan blades to, to match to match the, the Corsair fan in the back? I guess that would match better, right? Oh, what? Oh, wow, that was weird. Whoa, okay, it wants me to pick an orientation, but it's just like in the middle of the case. It freaked me out because the thermal paste like spread out and I was like, what happened? So I click again and then, okay, there it is. But yeah, it actually does clear this wires doing something weird, but uh, we'll just pretend we don't see that. And then we'll have the ability to actually cable that CPU cooler to our motherboard, so. Uh, okay, yeah, you'll see that we have issues here. This rear fan is not going to be able to connect to the motherboard. Uh, the front fan's gonna be fine, but I do have a solution for that. Uh, because we have this bracket over here, which we could do AIO water cooling in this case too, which is pretty amazing for cases small. You could mount a radiator here and do a pump res like uh, combo with an AIO basically. Uh, but we're not gonna do that, but, but because I have these fan mounts here, I'm actually gonna put a couple fans here, a couple case fans here. Uh, they will help in exhausting you know, some air, actually let's do, let's do Corsair. Let's just, let's, let's keep this looking consistent. The ML120 here. And we're gonna do two of them here on this little rail. And that is, of course, oh, I should, I should, I should have waited for the, for the CPU cooler. It was a mistake. Okay, st start over. Not really. Uh, there we go, get our fans in there. So what this is gonna allow us to do is I can't directly connect this rear case fan, but I can connect the front one to the motherboard, and then I can daisy chain my fans to the front fan, and now the rear fan to these side fans. So that's the only way I could think of to get that connected, but now all of my case fans are connected. If I didn't have that, at least with this motherboard, maybe different motherboards with different fan header arrangements. I don't know, this stuff is really janky in this game sometimes. Uh, but that, that worked. So that's what we're doing for now. That's what we're gonna do. Uh, let's get stuff, let's get our let's get our thermal paste back on. Let's get our CPU cooler back on, our Arctic CPU cooler. Okay, nice. So let's connect that to our motherboard. Okay, good. Cooling is in a good spot. Let's get a power supply. Let's first remove our power supply mount. And then let's find a power supply. I'm thinking 650 watt will be appropriate. Uh, won't be too much over, you know, it won't be too crazy, uh, but it'll be reasonable. It should give us enough headroom that we'll, we'll, be, we'll be comfortable where we're at. Let's get at least a modular power supply. I was thinking this uh, 650 from Cooler Master, this modular power supply would be nice. Good, that looks good. Let's unplug this. Let's put our bracket back on. And okay, good. Yeah, modular is nice for a small small case like this. I don't think I would be, I would definitely not be doing non-modular. Semi-modular would probably be fine. Uh, but in a small form factor build, you just don't have that much room to, to shove cables you don't need. So I would definitely recommend going with a modular power supply. Uh, all right, so there's that. Let's get some storage set up. So like I said, we're not gonna go with NVMe uh, super fast and about two storage. We are gonna go with two and a half inch SSDs. Uh, something more reasonable. I'm just gonna do gigabytes, one terabyte, nothing super flashy, but that can maybe be our main OS drive. And then for games, cause we're, we're gonna game, right? We're definitely gonna game. We can do a couple Seagate Barracuda, two terabyte. Of course you could do four terabyte, uh, but let's just say maybe we, we, we got one, one, you know, we got a couple two terabytes from a couple old builds and uh, we're just gonna bring them over to this one. So we can go ahead and put those in there, close that. So we've got four terabytes there, plus a one terabyte SSD for our OS. And uh, that'll set us up as far as storage goes. Let's plug all that in. So we'll do power and data. Actually, I did that backwards. Data and power for our SSD. We'll do data then power for each hard drive. Say to data, say to power. Okay, there's that. We can do our main motherboard power and then our EPS power for the CPU. And now all we really need at this point is a graphics card. We can also connect our case. That will be, uh, that'll be useful. Ooh, and actually, now I'm realizing I did stuff with fans, but I wonder. So we've got a 140 RGB fan in this uh, by default, but I wonder, can you put, no, I don't think you can. You can't put the mega fan in this, can you? I want the big 200 mil in here. Can I have that? 
Probably not. That would be so awesome. Can I do the 200 mil? No? Aw, oh, man, that would be so cool. Darn. So it's gotta be 140? Okay, fine. I'll put it back. You're right. That would have been so cool if you could put that gigantic 240 or uh, 200 mil in the front. Gosh, that'd be cool. All right, we'll put that back. I think that was the same. Is that the same fan? Is that the wrong fan? No, it's that one, right? Yeah, we're good. Okay, cool. Uh, let's connect that again. Darn, that would have been a that would have been a really fun experiment. Like experiment. I feel like you could put a really big fan in the front. 200 mil though. Yeah, I don't see the mounts for that. I wasn't sure if these, but I think that's just to mount the mesh front. So. Uh, all right, well, uh, let's see. We can put this mesh front on back on, I guess, since we won't be able to do anything else with the fan. So that's what that is. It would look so much cool. It would look so good with a huge fan on it. It's fine. Uh, graphics card. So we've got a 5600X for our CPU. I was thinking, how about a 3070 for our graphics card? Uh, nice compact GPU, good performance, a little more reasonably priced. Uh, still hard to get in real life, of course. Huh, though it's getting better, right? Uh, so our choices here are the Asus OC Edition, which I don't know if I'm that into, uh, the Ventus, and of course the Founders Edition. I like the Founders Edition a lot, actually. Let's let's get stuff out of the way so I can actually put this in the in the PC here. Uh, I like the Founders Edition. I actually think the 3070 looks really cool. The two fans in the bottom, and then you've got that mesh grill there on top, and that's a. Uh, all solid above the other fan. So a little different like the 3839 design, but a very cool design anyway. The power connector is still as dorky as ever, uh, but in this case, it won't be too offensive, honestly. We'll, we will barely see it, so. All right, there you go. That's all of the parts. Let's put our mesh. Actually, let's leave that off. It's fun to leave it off when we start it up, right? Okay, we should be good to fire that up. The only bit of RGB in this case pretty much is the front fan. That is like it. The motherboard doesn't even have any RGB, does it? Uh, okay, well, I'm gonna get some stuff set up. We can do some testing, see how our thermals look, and do a little 3D mark, and uh, we'll be right back. All right, so we got everything set up here. Ran 3D mark at 11,379. So that's 12,205 on our RTX 3070, and 8,226 on our Ryzen 5 5600X. Six core CPU, uh, so solid there. Uh, as far as temps go, actually, better than I expected. I wasn't sure about the CFM on that air cooler, uh, but it's doing just fine. 52C on the CPU and GPU is totally happy. I would take those temps in a heartbeat. Uh, as far as the RGB goes, there is only one thing to set, and it is that front fan. The other thing is, that's my monitor. It's 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 rainbow now. Uh, but the front fan I set to white, because, you know, white and black, and it's it's the only thing, so we might as well just make it white. We might as well just own the fact that, that this is going to be a, a white PC. So there you go. A small form factor, more of a mid-ranger build, uh, but pretty fun. Actually really fun to build with some of the other components, some of the, the, the more mid-tier components I haven't built with as much, so actually enjoyed doing this one a lot and I love this case any excuse to build the 380T is always worth it so we can put our side panels back on they're vented side panels fully vented uh, we would exhaust out these case fans here which is actually nice so intake in the front exhaust at the back exhaust at the side uh, we'd be a, we'd definitely be a little bit of a negative case pressure but I think it would still be all right so there you go uh, hopefully you enjoyed this build, uh, a fun one, a different one. So if you didn't join you and see more videos of Peace Building Simulator or any other games I've been playing, be sure to subscribe. And either way, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.